Well, good morning. Welcome to our worship today as we celebrate our love life in the Lord and as we continue a series we started at the beginning of summer. We're walking through the book of Romans and today we land on uh, Romans chapter 13 verses 11 to 14 which are about how we live our lives in view of the mercy of God and in view especially of the day that is the day of resurrection and reunion that we're all headed to. How that makes a difference in how we, uh, I'll try it Lenny and see what happens. We had this trouble in the first service, and so he gave me a tip. So let's see if it works, okay? There we go. Um, uh, but we're going to be walking through that, and we invite you to step into looking at time. This is also a, a precious opportunity for us to do a number of things. First of all, to welcome Malachi and the family of faith and baptism, uh, to commission and install some teachers uh, who are starting new with us and to recommission all of the other teachers who are continuing with us. Uh, we're also today um, uh, having a picnic after this service, and we also want to recognize not only the people that we pay to do work around here, but those we don't pay. That's called volunteers. And so today as you leave, we're going to be praying about that and, um, and encouraging you to pick one of these up. It's just a little uh, thank you. Uh, for all you do, um, it's a little pen and a bookmark uh, about serving the Lord. We're just so thankful. Uh, almost everybody does something around here. and We're just thankful for all of the time, effort, and energy you give to the work that we do as a body of believers here at Emmanuel. As we gather for worship today, a warm welcome to all of you, both members and guests who are with us today. And we pray you're encouraged and blessed in uh, the lifting of your voice with ours and the hearing of God's word. And, um, and we'll be motivated to go out and live as a child of God as, as we move into uh, uh, your week this week. Uh, as we gather, we ask both members and guests, if you'd be so kind to fill out one of the cards that you'll find in the pew rack. There's a side for members and a side for guests that helps us immensely in our shepherding here at Emmanuel. So if you would fill out one of those cards for us and um, pass it to your right during the first part of our service, the ushers will gather those from the end of the pews a little bit later in our service during the time of the the sermon hymn, so we'd love to have those from you. Um, if you have a particular pastoral need you'd like me or uh, Pastor Benke to, to meet, we'd love to be able to do that for you. You can note it on the bottom of the card or talk to me after. Pastor Benke isn't here again because he went for a second trip to catch fish in Canada, so, <laughs> so tell him he's got to spend a little less time in Canada, a little bit more time in the USA. Um, no, he's having a good time up there, and so we... Um, uh, we encourage you to do that, and we'll get back to you and, and uh, address whatever need you have. So don't be afraid uh, either to write it down there or to uh, talk to me after. Uh, also, if you're a first-time guest here at Emmanuel and you'd like to know a little bit more about our family of faith, we'd love to have you stop by our guest services desk. That's the desk you came, you passed when you came into the entryway. Um, and there's some red bags in there with some more information about our family of faith. Uh, in a folder, and also copy of the Gospel of John on DVD. We'd love to have you take with you to encourage your faith and, and your life. As we worship in the service, we'll be following the order of service that's printed in your worship guide. You've been handed as you came in. It will also be projected on the screen, so you can follow it in either of those two places. Uh, at this time, we invite you to rise and just greet those who are uh, sitting around you today, and then we'll continue with uh, our opening hymn. Good morning. Good to have you with us today. Good morning. Good morning. God's peace be with you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's sing. Oh, 
We're having ooh, a little trouble with our, our sound system today, so we'll, we'll see if we can get that fixed. Well, we're gathered in God's name to celebrate the love and life that we have in our Jesus, and, um, and we have the precious privilege of welcoming Malachi into the family of faith in water and word and baptism. So we invite you to follow along with the rite of baptism uh, on the screen uh, and uh, join us in participating in, in this rite. Our Lord Jesus Christ commanded baptism, saying in the last chapter of Matthew, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. The Holy Spirit, through the Apostle St. Peter, also said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Hearing the command of the Lord and trusting in the power of his word, you have brought to Malachi... Uh, sign of the cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ. mercy, bless Malachi with true faith, so that by this saving flood his sinful nature might be drowned, and that he might rise to new life, to serve your name at all times, until he comes to his eternal home, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Here our Lord Jesus saw open his name to the children in the Gospel of Mark. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them. But the disciples rebuked them, and when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. And he said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and he blessed them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. It is now especially your responsibility as parents and as godparents uh, to remember how to time your prayers, to put them in mind of his baptism, and to lend your advice and support, especially if he should lose his parents, that he be brought up in the true faith and worship of God, that he sought the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and the Lord's Prayer, that he's encouraged to read and study the Holy Scriptures, that he's brought to God's house for worship and education, and comes to the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, living as a child of the Lord Jesus until he comes. For this thing you gladly and willingly intend to do and answer yes with the help of God. And you, the assembled congregation of Emmanuel Lutheran Church, promise to provide support for these parents and these godparents in their work and to provide opportunities for growth for this new brother in Christ, then answer yes with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Instead of this child, with questions that I'll now address to him. Malachi, Michael, Gary, you pronounce the devil in all his works and all his ways, then answer, I do. You believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, then answer, I do. You believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead, and answer, I do. You believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting, then answer, I do. And will you be baptized into this Christian faith, then answer, I will. Malachi, Michael, Geringer, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy 
Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has now given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins. May He strengthen you with His grace in the life everlasting. Peace is yours. Amen. Good prayer. Almighty and merciful God and Father, we thank you for graciously preserving and enlarging your kingdom, and for giving to Malachi the new birth and baptism, and making him a member of your kingdom. Keep him now in his baptismal grace, that he might grow and lead a godly life and share in the joy of heaven. Enable his parents and godparents to be teachers and examples of faith and life, so that they might eternally with their children share the salvation you have given them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through baptism, God has added Malachi Michael Geringer to his own people to declare the wonderful deeds of our Savior, who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same Heavenly Father, to work with us in his kingdom. Receive now this burning light to live always by the light of Christ, that you might be ever watchful for his coming and meet him with joy and enter with him in the marriage feast of the Lamb and his eternal kingdom. May the Lord preserve your coming in and going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Let's uh, celebrate this baptismal birth as we join in the first verse of I am Jesus, little Lamb. Because God shows you to be first fruits through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. He called us to this through the gospel, that we might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope. Encourage our hearts and strengthen us in every good deed. Gather now in the name of our triune God. Let us ask through the power of His Spirit for the Father's forgiveness because of the work of His Son, our Savior Jesus. We pray. Merciful Father, I know that I am not righteous in your sight. I have not always sought you. My heart has been bitter, and my mouth has spoken poorly of others. I have not followed your way of peace. I have short of your glory. I cannot be declared righteous by what I do. I can only be made holy as a gift of your grace. Because of your love for me, Jesus, I trust the power of his death to forgive me all my sins and make me righteous. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, I have good news for you. For you see, at just the right time, while we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. And while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God now credits his righteousness to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. So your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, rejoice in this good news. We are justified by grace through faith. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, leading me to be alert to the times of my life that open the doors of opportunity to serve you and my neighbor. Keeping me watchful and productive until you return and to the living in my heart. With your Father and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
invite you to be seated as we continue with uh, the readings from God's Holy Word. Uh, first, from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You know, these are very, um, the Gospel and, and Old Testament are very timely lessons because they talk about the inclusion of foreigners in the kingdom of God. And certainly we've got a lot of tension in this country and in this world about that. So let's let God's word speak to our hearts as he reminds us that he calls us to be in a kingdom for all nations. Um, Listen to these words from Isaiah 56. He says, this is what the Lord says, maintain justice and do what's right for my salvation is close at hand and my righteousness will soon be revealed. Blessed is the one who does this, the person who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath without desecrating it, and keeps hands from doing any evil. Let no foreigner who is bound to the Lord say, The Lord will surely exclude me from his people. And let no eunuch complain, I'm only a dry tree. For this is what the Lord says, To the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose what pleases me and hold fast to my covenant, To them I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will endure forever. And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it and who hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The Sovereign Lord declares, he who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is a part of our continuous reading uh, from the book of Romans, and it's the base of our sermon meditation today from Romans 13. And do this understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let's put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy, but rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and don't think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we prepare to hear the words of our Jesus, let's stand and give glory to him in our gospel preparation song. From the Gospel of Matthew, the 15th chapter, Jesus also welcomes the faith of a foreigner who trusts his implicit power to care for her. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me, for my daughter's demon possessed and suffering terribly. Well, Jesus didn't answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away for she keeps crying out after us. And he answered, I was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. Now the woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. And he replied, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. 
and her daughter was healed at that very moment. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated and the children come forward for the children's lesson. And um, <clears throat> teachers, I'm going to invite you to come up in just a minute, okay? Because you've got to be a part of this too. But all the kids come up. Just a few announcements for our family of faith. If you haven't read it by now, our, the pastor that we called to be our associate is, uh, declined our call. And um, I'm really disappointed. I told him he broke us. Who needs one yet? There you need one. Who else needs one? One. Don't get hurt. Oops. There. All right. Does one there yet? Everybody got one? Everyone got one? All right. Now. You see it's got a little hook on it, and that's so you can put it on your backpack. But I want you to look at it, and I want you to tell me what's, what's on it. What's in the center of it? A cross. That's right, because you want to remember that 
Then we have Jesus, and what's that cross? Yeah, that's a uh, heart. When you have Jesus in your heart, you take him wherever you go, right? And when Jesus died on the cross, he died so that your spiritual heart would have life, so that it's full of life and whatever heart is. Now, what's around that heart? Heart. A what? No, 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 right around the heart. A flower. a flower, and it's particularly a white rose. Now, white is a particular color that we use in the church for something. Like when somebody's getting married, what's the bride's dress? White. When it's Easter time and we're celebrating uh, Jesus' resurrection from the dead, and we're all happy about it, all of these colors up here are white, because white's a time of joy. Because of what God has done for us. And so the white flower re reminds us of the joy and peace we have because of Jesus. And around the white flower is what color? Yellow. No, oh, before that, blue. blue. What's blue? The sky. Or it's to make us think of heaven. To remind us that when we have Jesus in our hearts, we're not only going to live here on earth, but we're also going to live with him in heaven. And then around the outside is a uh, Yellow or gold, it's supposed to be. There's some words there. So there's gold, and then gold is to remind us um, because it's a circle, what doesn't it have? Like my ring. What doesn't it have? A beginning or an end, right? And so it reminds us that when we're living with God, we always live with Him, and there's no beginning or end to that. Now, the coloring sheet I have for you has all of those kind of things on it. It's got a picture of this. You can color it in yourself and it reminds you what those things are. But on the other side of the color is, is, is something else. And, and that's a picture of some kids. And on the bottom it says, if you read that, what does it say? Be kind to one another. Because when you got Jesus in your heart, it changes what you do with your mouth and with your hands. And specifically, when you go to school, Jesus wants to remember when you carry him with you, that you're going to be kind to your teachers, to your uh, classmates, uh, to your teammates. If you have to get on a team of some kind, you're going to be kind because you want to show other people what's in your heart. All right? So I'm going to have all of you stand up. And this time we're going to pray a little bit. Instead of praying after me, I'm just going to pray over you. So I want you to hold your backpacks. Stand up. Everybody come in close. Come in close. And let's pray that God will go with us in this school year, okay? Would you, would you just let me pray over you? Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the gift of your love and for the love of Jesus. We ask that you would go with us in this school year so that we could be your voice and your hands with um, in all of the different schools we go to and all the different classrooms we're going to learn in. Help us use our minds and our bodies so that we uh, can use them to serve other people in the way that you served us in Jesus. Bless our school year with your presence. Amen. All right. Now it's going to take a little time because there's a lot of you here today, so we'll get a coloring sheet and some records. And we'll continue to sing the next day. It's not spirit.
grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to feel a little caged today staying up here, just so you know, okay? But I want you to be able to hear well, so we'll stay where we've got a good microphone. Well, today we're going to uh, uh, walk into this passage from Romans chapter 13. And the way I'd like to start today is through... Um, is, is, is through the, um, the understanding of time and, and what's happening while well, school is starting and that impacts us around here because this building's going to get really, really busy in a short period of time. And um, it's been pretty busy in the last week, but it's going to get busier. And a lot of that busyness is tied to calendar time. So uh, as, as we live in the rhythm of our lives, we know that summer is a time when very often... Um, Families are doing a lot of vacations and there's a lot of traveling and, and enjoying the beach and the festivals and all that kind of thing, but sooner or later the calendar catches up with us and we got to start school again. And um, that's this week. And not only do we have the calendar time month by month, but we also have the cal calendar time day by day. So when you're in school, what happens? There's little bells that go off. One of the bells means means it's time to move to a different class or start a different subject or whatever it might be, and very often, especially in the high schools, they invite the kids to come in a little bit early and maybe walk through their schedule a little bit so when they get there that first day, they're not wondering where they got to go, right? Because they only get a limited amount of time to move sometimes across a whole building, and so they want them to have kind of the lay of the land because they're bound to that kind of clock time. But there's another time that happens very often in the educational experience, best uh, pictured, I think, by this guy. It's, uh, oh, I get it now, you know. And all of us have probably had those kind of times in our lives. Um, uh, it might have happened when you were first learning to read, and you know, you saw the letters, and you started to associate the letters with sounds, and you were able to put those different sounds together, and all of a sudden it kind of clicked, and off to the races you were, and you were able to read anything you, you picked up, and you just said, I get it now. That often happens with language. I've had that experience because I've studied Latin and German and Hebrew and Greek, and and especially with Hebrew, if you know the way Hebrew looks, it looks like a chicken got loose on a page, right? It just looks like that, and, and, and it really is intimidating when you first start learning, but all of a sudden it clicks, and all of those symbols mean something, and you're able to work your way through it and, and actually use the language. And, and it can happen in math, you know, maybe you're struggling in algebra because you just don't understand that particular uh, formula, and all of a sudden it clicks, and... And, and, and it starts to come together. It can happen playing a musical instrument. It can happen as people are, um, are getting up, uh, geared up for football seasons at high school and they're trying to learn a playbook and, and all of a sudden what becomes a struggle to remember becomes just natural, just things that you're able to do. So many different times in our lives that happens. And the Apostle Paul is addressing both of these kind of times in our text today as we recognize that the gospel changes our life. It changes our relationship as we have walked through these last few, um, uh, last month and a half at least, uh, all of these different relationships. But today, it especially changes our relationship to the day, to the day in which we live and the way we live that day because we know about the day that Jesus is coming again, that great day of resurrection and reunion. And Paul introduces this thought with these words. So would you read them with me and do this understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over, the day is over. And what Paul is doing is he's describing time, and he uses the word time, and he uses the word day, and he's really referencing two different kinds of time that are there in the Greek. In the first word, when he's using the word time, it's the word kairos. Uh, in the second, uh, when he's referencing the day, he's referencing the chronos. Now, what's the difference between these two? Well, chronos is your chronological time. It's the ticking of the clock. It's the turning of the page on a calendar. It's where we get the word chronological from in English. And, and you and I live by the clock, right? In terms of uh, what we're supposed to do on any given day and, and what time we have to be someplace by the clock, right? 
But there's another kind of time in the Bible, and it's this time that Paul refers to in this lesson. It's the word kairos, which um, is defined best as, um, as a time for crucial action, the opportune and decisive moment. Now this is Miriam uh, Webster's uh, dictionary meaning, but I can guarantee you that in Greek dictionaries for the New Testament, it says the same thing. A kairos is a time when God grabs hold of your attention um, and, and, and it leads you to a change in the way you act, behave, or the, even the direction of your life. Um, in, in our culture, if somebody is not paying attention when, when they drive, they get cited for inattentive driving. Uh, you could say that one of the things the Apostle Paul is reminding us here is that many of us could be cited for inattentive living. Inattentive living. Not paying attention to what God has in mind for us in the day-to-day -day experiences that we have. And this uh, word is repeated again and again and again in the Bible. Just to give you a few examples. Um, when Jesus introduces himself... In the Gospel of Mark, he says the time. He's not talking about the chronos. He's not saying, well, let's see, I had an appointment with you and now that time has come. No, he's using that R word. The time, the opportune time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Even the devil looked for a kairos. When the devil had finished tempting Jesus in Luke chapter 4, he looks for a kairos, an opportune time when he can decisively act to bring Jesus down. You and I experience those opportune times every time we repent, according to the Bible. In Acts chapter 3, it says, Repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, and that times of refreshing, and it's this word kairos, times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Um, We've been using in the absolution every week during this series in Romans, a passage from Romans. You see, at just the right time, that's the kairos, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. It was an opportune time God took to put Jesus on the cross for our sins. And, and that time is that God breaks into our lives is not set to a time on a clock. And for some of us, it happened when we were very, very young. Malachi this morning getting baptized, right? And being welcomed into the kingdom. For others of us, it might have happened a little bit older uh, in life. I've baptized 77-year-old people who have first come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. It can happen at, at any time on the chronological, that God breaks in with this, this opportune time to grab hold of the kingdom and to be a part of him. And this is what Paul's referring to in 2 Corinthians when he says, in the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor, and now is the day of salvation. And so, uh, so God describes that time when he breaks into our lives and, and Jesus becomes Lord of our li lives as one of those kairos moments, one of those, I get it now, I know who I am, I know that I'm a created and adopted child of God, I know I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, I know his spirit is living within me. You see, all those things that we so often take for granted in the church are a part of God's work in our lives according to his good and gracious time. But now... It's our turn to pay attention to the times. It's our turn to step into the times that God places in our lives. And two verses where Paul talks about that are these two. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of the kairos, the every opportunity because the days are evil. And again in Colossians. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Part of, of helping our children understand that, that God gives them opportunities to be his representative as they go to school is why we do a backpack blessing. And why we give them something to remind them of their faith as they step into whatever school they're going to, whatever classroom they're going to be in, to remind them that they have opportunities to be a blessing to others. And, and uh, Tony Campolo, a uh, Christian theologian and, and teacher, um, <clears throat> uh, had this experience as he was going through uh, graduate school. He, 
He was uh, in a graduate uh, class on Chinese philosophy, and it was taught by a Buddhist monk. And he said to Tony during the class, he said, as a Christian, you teach your children to pray all wrong. You teach them to pray, if I should die before I wake. You know the prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Okay? Now why did he say that? Well, the monk went on to point out that most of the people he knew were half awake when they should be asleep. And many people who were trying to sleep ended up being half awake. I don't know how your sleep was last night, you know. Um, but no one seemed to be, he said, totally alive. And as a result, Tony Campolo wrote an article about our life in Jesus called, If I Should Wake Before I Die. In other words, he says, um, our prayer because we know that God has put us in this life and because we know that he's placed opportunities in our, in, in our lives to be his representatives, is to pray that God would make us awake, to pray that he would open our eyes, to pray that he would open our ears so that we could see those opportunities when they arise in life. If I should wake before I die. Paul is saying life is short, do stuff that matters. And, and because you and I have a different perspective than this world has by its very nature, the stuff that matters to us is different than what this world offers. You know? And we're, we're, we walk in our daily walk, whether it's at work or in a school or in a playground or in a, or in a neighborhood or at Irish Fest where I hope to be tonight, we have opportunities to live in the moment to see what kind of things God is going to bring into our hearts and in our lives and to seize those moments and use them for the sake of our, of our God. And this is the way he then says to implement it. Very simply, let's read it together. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Now, if you, um, if you just pause and slow down and listen to those words, look at those words, what do you see? There are three different ways that he commands, and each one has a positive and a negative. The first one goes like this. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now this is put off, put on language. It's talking about clothes. So here's the question. How many of you showed up for church today in your pajamas? Right? Because those are clothes that you use at night. But if you're getting up to do something in the day, whether it's coming to church or going to work, you put on different clothes so that you're prepared for whatever it is that opportunity is going to bring into your life. So, so that's the first thing, first image he says. When we get up in the morning, we take off the deeds of darkness, we take off our bedclothes, and we put on armor of light. We're aware, you see, in that light of the Lord of what he's doing in our lives. And what does that look like um, further? Now he says a uh, positive and then a negative. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, and now he gives the negative, not in, and he gives three pairs. Not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Okay? Carousing is probably what I'll see a little bit at Irish Fest tonight. And it's often paired with drunkenness because people drink too much and it lets down their inhibitions and they do some things that they otherwise wouldn't do. And often those are things that they are ashamed of later on when they find out about it. So he says, be careful as you live your life to live decently, not in carousing and drunkenness. The next pair is sexual immorality and debauchery. Sexual immorality is literally um, a word for bed in Greek, and it just means being faithful to your vows to honor marriage as God intended it, whether it's the vow you made to another person or the vow that two other people around you make, that you honor those vows. And it's tied to debauchery. The debauchery is an interesting word in Greek because it means to not be ashamed. That's to be uh, uh, debaucherized or whatever, okay? 
So think about it this way, right? Sometimes people do really stupid and bad stuff, sometimes even evil stuff, and they videotape themselves and put it on Facebook. Makes it real easy for the cops to catch you that way, right? But why do they do that? Because they're not ashamed anymore of the evil or of the wrong that they're doing. That's this word. They're not ashamed anymore. They've lost that sense of shame. And it's, it's just appalling when that happens, you and I know in our society. So Paul says, stay away from that. And, you know, up until this point, you and I might say, go preacher, because these are really bad things. Carousing, drunkenness, sexual immorality, debauchery. And then he gets a little too close. Because he says, not in dissension or jealousy. How many of you fight? I love uh, my uh, premarital book on conflict. Uh, the first sentence says, conflict is a fact of life. So I always tell couples, it's not whether you're going to do it or not, it's how good you're going to get at it, right? But by good you're going to get at it is not so that you win, but so that the relationship is preserved and cared for. Because it's going to happen. Dissension. Um, and jealousy. Now this word jealousy can go either way because it's the word zeal in the original language. And, and you can have a great passion and zeal. For instance, we hope kids do when they get into the classroom this year. That they have a passion and zeal for learning, right? Makes it a lot easier to teach. Um, but it also can be used in a negative way. That I have a passion and zeal for what somebody else has. And that's what Paul is referring to here. That kind of jealousy. So he says, put that... Put on decent behavior. Here's what bad behavior looks like. Shameless behavior looks like. And then the third pair is, um, again, the positive first. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the negative, and don't think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Now, one of the ways Luther, one of the reasons we're using the tag we are for backpack tags, is this is, what anniversary of the Lutheran church is here? It's the... 500th, okay? If you didn't know that, you know it now. 500th anniversary of the Lutheran Church, okay? And Luther, if you read your catechism, did say that we should continue to make the sign of the cross. He said the first thing when you get up in the morning, make the sign of the cross, say in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Why? Not as a good luck charm, but to remember your baptism like uh, Malachi was baptized today. And to remember who's made you his child. So that when you go out and you live your life, you're living as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ and you're looking for those opportunities to love and serve and care in his name. And then he says, it's interesting, at the end of the night, make the sign of the cross and say the words in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Why this time? To remember that Jesus died for your sins and all those opportunities you missed today, you know, all those places where you an opportunity and messed up, Remember, Jesus died for that. And when you stand at the foot of the cross, you know you can go to sleep in peace because you are fully forgiven and free. So what does this look like? Well, a rather dramatic example comes from the football world. It's this fella. His name is Jason Brown. He's the guy with the ball in his hands. He was um, at one time the premier center in the National Football League. He was born in 1983 and Henderson, North Carolina, and from a young age it became apparent to everybody he was going to be a star football player because he grew up to be six foot, 300 pounds, and he was quick, and he was strong. So he went to the University of North Carolina. He was drafted in the NFL. He joined the Baltimore Ravens, and he played with them for nine years. When he finished nine years, he was a free agent, and he signed a contract for another five years, this time with the St. Louis Rams, for $37.5 million, $20 million of that guaranteed. And yet, two years into that time, he walked away from football. In late 2011, he had two children. He had a mansion, he said, with uh, two fully stocked bars. And yet he and his wife, as he would describe their life, were dying inside and were likely headed toward divorce. And as a professed Christian, he hated to admit that his relationship thus far with Jesus was just a ticket to forgiveness. And it was little else. Until he then, in that year, released his grip on money and football. And he started holding on to Jesus and following where he led. And, and so uh, he left the Rams. And uh, he turned down three other teams who tried to recruit him. And he put his mansion up for sale. And he bought a 100-year-old farmhouse with um, 
a dairy barn and 1,000 acres of uninterrupted land in North Carolina back in the home state, home state where he came from. And he would soon become a farmer with the intent purpose of giving away what he grows. He didn't know anything about farming. He didn't grow up on a farm. He learned everything he knows from farming. He says from YouTube. It's amazing what you can learn, right? He named his farm the First Fruits Farm, and it's an organization that seeks through both community and service to boost Bible literacy and to feed the, the hungry. 2,000 pounds of cucumbers and 100,000 pounds of sweet potatoes later, uh, he says this, I literally still know nothing about farming, but my business plan and my life plan can be summed up in one word, and that's in obedience. What he obeyed is the calling of his Lord. He had what, of course, we call a come to Jesus moment. That's a time when Jesus gets a hold of your heart and soul and, and transforms it. And, and, and Jesus doesn't call perfect people. That's good news for you and me. We sing it every time we sing the hymn, Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. Just as I am, poor, wretched, blind, sight, riches, healing of the mind. You see, there's, there's nothing you can give Jesus. He gives you life, and he gives you love. And he gives you a new life and new eyes to see, not only that he loves you, but he's called you to be an instrument in his, in his kingdom to love and serve others and, and to open your eyes to those opportunities that he gives you. So let's, um, let's say that prayer backwards, if I should wake before I die. Would you rise and let me pray that for us? Heavenly Father, wake us up. Wake us up to the joy and the life that you would have us live, the opportunities that you place before us each and every day. Open us up to, the, uh, to, to serve uh, the neighbor that you brought uh, into our door. We especially pray that as our children and teachers go back to classrooms in our grade schools and high schools um, uh, here and throughout our, our area and, and, and our nation. Father, we just ask that you would um, help us to grab hold of that life that truly is life as we um, live in the power of your spirit and share that life with others. Bless us to that end in Jesus' name. Amen. May that peace which surpasses all human understanding uh, keep your my hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's uh, continue with the... Um, Word for stewards today, the creed was confessed in baptism a little bit earlier, so uh, this is another encouragement to pay attention to those kairoses, those times, from 2 Corinthians 6. And working together with him, we also urge you not to receive the grace of God in vain, for he says, at the acceptable time I listened to you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Please be seated as we gather our tithes and offerings to support the kingdom work we do together here and as we sing our offering hymn.
Let's just see if that works a little better. At this time, we have the privilege of both commissioning and installing um, some teachers uh, who are new to our, our staff and then to also welcome our, our other teachers to recommit. So I'd like right now, Elizabeth, would you come uh, up? Uh, Lizzie Dunnigan is being commissioned. It's her first call into the Office of the Teaching Ministry. John and Stephanie, would you come up? And uh, Mary and Stacy. Um, you guys first. Come on up here. <laughs> All righty. Well, beloved in the Lord, according to the church as usual. These before you have been called to the office of teacher at Emmanuel Lutheran Church School and Child Care. That office has been established in love by the church to support the office of the holy ministry and to assist and strengthen Christian fathers and mothers in their God-given responsibility to bring up their children in the nature and instruction of the Lord. They have been prepared for this office by their prayer and by their study. They've been examined and declared ready to undertake this responsibility and this trust. Hear the word of the Lord concerning this office. He says uh, in Romans 12, By the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in the body there are many members, and the members don't all have the same function, uh, and... And as we, though many, are one body in Christ, individually members of one another, we have different gifts that differ according to the grace that God has given us, so let's use them. If it's prophecy in proportion to our faith of service and serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, and the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness, Jesus also, in the Gospel of Matthew, called uh, especially those who serve in the church to have an attitude and a heart like his own. And so Jesus, it says there, in Matthew chapter 20, called and said, You know the rulers of the Gentiles, how they lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them, but it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And I'll ask you in the presence of this congregation that has called you to serve in this office, do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testament to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Then answer, yes, I do. Yes, I do. And do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, Nicene and Athanasian creeds, to be faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures? Uh, and do you reject all errors that they condemn? Then answer, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Do you confess the unaltered Augsburg Confession to be a true exposition of the Holy Scriptures? And do you confess that the apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small called articles, the treatise on the power and primacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord, as these are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith, then answer, yes, I make these confessions my own. Yes, I make these confessions my own. And do you solemnly promise to faithfully serve God's people in the office of teacher in accordance with the Holy Scripture and with these confessions, then answer, yes, I promise with the help of God. Yes, I promise with the help of God. And will you, trusting in God's care, seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills and adorn the gospel of Jesus Christ with a godly life, then answer, yes, I promise with the help of God. Yes, I promise with the help of God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you've heard the confession and solemn promises of these servants who have been now called to the office of teacher in the church. I now ask you in the presence of God, will you receive them, show them fitting love and honor, and support them by your gifts and fervent prayer? If so, then answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. I now ask you, uh, 
Lizzie first. Are you ready and willing to assume this office and work? Then answer, I am. Elizabeth Dunnigan, I commission you to the office of teacher and I install you as teacher of Emmanuel Lutheran School in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I now ask you, John and Stephanie and Stacy and Mary, are, are you ready and willing to assume the work of this office in this place? Then answer, I am. I am. Then John Game, Stephanie Game, Stacy Heinrich, and Mary Manning, I install you as teachers of Manning Lutheran Church School and Child Care in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like all of our teaching uh, and school staff to stand where they are. So just stand where you are, please. Some of them have babies in arms, so I don't want to make them all come out. Okay. We had a lot of babies this last year. So if, if you'll just rise in. And I now ask you, uh, in the presence of God in this congregation, will you continue to fulfill the call that you have as teachers at Emmanuel Lutheran Church School in Child Care? that you will give uh, diligent love and service, striving for excellence in your skills and adorning the gospel of Jesus Christ with a godly life, then answer, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. Let us pray. Gracious and most merciful Lord, we thank you for providing faithful men and women in your church to assist and support the office of the Holy Ministry and its work among us. Grant your Holy Spirit uh, to uh, Lizzie, and to John, and Stephanie, and to Stacy, and to Mary, and to the rest of our, our staff, who with wisdom and power from on high, incline now both young and old to godliness and obedience, and let them so benefit by the instruction in your holy word that they can serve you all their days and finally obtain eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and serve with joy. May the almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, bless you, and strengthen you for faithful service in his name. Amen. Let's uh, give thanks for these servants among us. Would you do that? I invite the congregation to rise as now we all pray for the ministry that uh, we share together in this place in our church school and child care. You'll see the prayer up on the screen and then we'll continue with the prayers of the day. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we remember with thanksgiving your blessing for more than 94 years upon our Lutheran Day School and for 105 years of ministry as your people in this place. Fill our school, its pastors, teachers, staff, parents, and children with your continued grace. Give us great joy in our partnership with you, transforming hearts and lives through the teaching of your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray. Lord of time, Grant your comfort and healing to those in need of your healing touch, including Kitty and Therese, Jan, Jennifer, Fred, Kathy, Jerry, Edna, Adrian, Valora, Lorna, Craig, Sandy, Randy, Steve, Sherry, and Pastor Peter. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of time, confirm now your loving rule and reign in the hearts of Malachi Michael Geringer and Alexander Paul Berger. Through your word and water in baptism, bless them to grow strong in faith paying attention to your leading in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord of time, we rejoice in the gift of new physical life given to families at the births of children. We give thanks, especially today, with Robert and Barbara Spatticini in the birth of their new granddaughter, Charlotte Dawn. Bless Charlotte and her mother, Alicia, with healing and health, and join Charlotte to your forever family so that she might hear your voice and follow your leading. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord of time, grace with your comfort, all who are going through a time of grief, especially Michael McKibbins and his family, the death of his father, Douglas, and those grieving deaths of loved ones as a result of terrorist attacks and civil unrest in our nation and in our world. Bring them resurrection, peace, and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 
Lord of time, strengthen those who provide protection in this season of trouble, conflict, and tension in our nation and in our world, especially our police officers, firefighters, and our servicemen and women. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of time, move us to loving service in this season of our life together at Emmanuel and our church, school, and child care. We rejoice in the loving service of the many volunteers in your in our kingdom work. Pour out your rich blessings on us and strengthen our hearts and souls and minds as we seize those opportunities to serve one another. We rejoice in the loving service of our professional staff and ask that you would bless them as they begin a new year. Bless also teachers and uh, students in all of the schools of our nation as they head back to school and, and allow them to have opportunity for, to develop the gifts you've given them. Give direction to our pastoral call committee as they consider our next steps in calling a pastor to serve among us. Lord, in your mercy, and Lord of the church, we thank you as Pastor Landon Martin, Cindy Fosham's son-in-law, is installed today as pastor of Grace Lutheran in Woodbridge, Virginia, and ask you to bless his uh, and Alyssa's ministry in that place in your kingdom. We rejoice with Joe, Lisa, Ali, and Kayla O'Farrell as Lisa begins her new role as a registered nurse at the VA. May her patience be blessed as she serves them. Walk with Allie and Kayla as they begin a new school year, particularly with Allie as she begins high school at Milwaukee Lutheran High School. Bless her, her fellow students, and her teachers there as they celebrate your love and life every day. We rejoice with Jenny Protratz in the completion of her studies and the opportunity to serve others as a pharmacist now as she begins her new career. We are thankful for all our blessings with Tim, Tom, Teresa, Allie and Tom Potratz, with Brian, Courtney and Wyatt Polson, and with Marlene Price. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, now remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the God who gives encouragement and good hope uh, and endurance give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice we may glorify the God and Father. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be and remain with you always. Hallelujah. Amen.